the president on the world stage in the UK. But back at home, Democrats are pushing forward their impeachment inquiry, moving it now into the House Judiciary Committee this morning with another round of hearings. This is House Democrats released a report which accuses the president of abusing his office for personal gain. Misconduct? and abuse of power are the articles of impeachment. Joining me right now is special advisor to President Trump and former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Great to see you, Pam. Thanks very much for being here you this too. morning. Thanks, Maria. You so too. what should we expect now as this moves into the Judiciary Committee? We had Matt Gates on earlier who said that he's going to be uh, hearing from witnesses today who are mm -hmm. academics. So my question is, what do the academics have to do with this phone call between the president and the president of Ukraine? Well, and no offense to academics, I went to law school, I loved my con law professor, but we're going to hear a lot of professors this morning, and they're going to opine on what the president did. I think you're going to hear a lot of great cross-examination from Republicans talking about their bias to begin with. But you know what? Why do we even need that? And here's the report, okay? This report is 300 pages that the House released. 300 pages. You know what it omits? The words... I presumed, I assumed, this is based on hearsay. He told me, she told me. That's all out of this report, and they put it in here as fact, 300 pages. This has been rigged from day one, and, you know, as you know, Maria Nadler is going to be heading this whole thing up today. And what did we find out about him? Two years ago, in the New York Times, two years ago, he said he is best positioned as a scholar to take on President Trump and impeach him two years ago before any of this junk, and it is junk, came up. It's a sham process. It's been rigged from the beginning. And I can't wait to hear the cross-exam today from our great Republican members. Well, it's, it's pretty incredible to me, though, that they are moving forward with it based on what you're calling hearsay. I mean, you don't, do you have anybody that you've heard from who actually was on the call? I mean, the president released the transcript, and we know what the transcript said. How is mm -hmm. this taking such life? Uh, it's taking life because of people like Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, and Nadler. That's why it's taking life, and they have been intent before our president was even sworn into office, two days after he was elected, to impeach him. They've been talking about finding a way to impeach him, and they don't have anything, and they're not going to give up on this, but we're going to fight back, and we know the president did nothing wrong. Two people were on that call, President Trump and President Zelensky, and what did they both say? There was no quid pro quo. Right. The president did nothing wrong. Ukraine didn't even know aid was being withheld. And aid was withheld from many, many countries because of the intense corruption. After President Zelensky was in office for a while, what do we know? The country started cleaning itself up. Parliament took place. He replaced bad people. He, he did the right things. And the aid was ultimately released. And by the way, without any investigation ever being opened. Is the this president, is a witch hunt. Is the president planning to send anybody to any of these hearings this week? Uh, you know, is it, is it better to just ignore it or just have, have a representative in that room? No, we have great members of the House Judiciary who are going to be there. You know, this is a sham process from day one. Yeah. And why would we participate in it? Also, the president's in NATO. Maria, you, you've been talking about all the great things that he's doing in NATO. And to do this when a president is in foreign land meeting with world leaders, doing some of the most important work he can do for our country, they are holding impeachment hearings. It's outrageous. It should outrage every American. Also that, as you've talked about in the past, UMCA, USMCA, it's already, it's sitting on Nancy Pelosi's desk, right. collecting dust. It could bring 176,000 jobs and billions of dollars to our country, USMCA. I, we could go on, yeah. NDAA, you know, it's, it seemed, everything. It, well, definitely they're leaving a lot on the table, and I, and I think that that's what happened when they went home for Thanksgiving, that they mm -hmm. faced the wrath of constituents who said, what are you doing for me? What, what have you done for me lately? And what have you been working on the last two months? And it's like squat. 
you know, you don't As have well USMCA, they you don't have the prescription drug mm -hmm. plan. I mean, it, are pricing. we ever going to see an infrastructure situation? Mm -hmm. It appears to me, Pam, let me, let me get your take on this, that there's a real division within the Democratic Party right now. Because, you know, I, I spoke with uh, Congressman Jeff Van Drew from New Jersey about a week ago, yeah. and he said, I'm a no. I'm voting no on impeachment. And there are plenty of other Democrat colleagues of mm -hmm. mine, this is Jeff Van Drew saying this, that feel that we're not getting anything done and that we shouldn't go down this road. And earlier, right. Steve Forbes mentioned Chuck Schumer. Where is Senator Chuck Schumer is all of this? He's sort of hiding under a rock. He doesn't want to, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be anywhere near this. It seems mm -hmm. to me there's a major division going on in the Democrats right now with this. Maria, you're correct. There is a major division, and there should be. First of all, this thing shouldn't even go to a vote. This should be over, finished, done. It should not go to a vote. We all know that, and many Democrats, we're hearing that all the time, that there are so many Democrats who aren't happy with this and are not going to vote for it. Their constituents don't want it. They don't want it. They want to be focusing on things that are important to the American people that we just talked about. So, As to the Republicans, yeah. we are more unified than ever. I have never seen such great unity within our party. And that's probably one of the only good things to come out of this. So the president and House Intel Committee Chairman Adam Schiff both spoke out yesterday about this. Let's listen to this. Got to get your reaction. Watch. I think Adam Schiff is a deranged human being. I think he grew up with a complex for lots of reasons that are obvious. I think he's a very sick man. And he lies. The president used his office and his bully pulpit to try to intimidate witnesses. And to my GOP colleagues, they need to consider that when we have a Democratic president, are they willing to say, in answer to their oversight, that a president may simply refuse? You know, I find this so rich, Pam, in the face of what we know took place in the 2016 right. election. Right. You know, that, that the waters are continuing to be muddied uh, in, in every instance where we know we're getting an IG report or we're getting information uh, about this criminal investigation that John Durham is doing, mm -hmm. and yet they continue to just push forward on impeachment. Mm -hmm. Well, Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler, Nancy Pelosi, they are dead set on impeaching the president. And they don't care. As we know, Nadler's been saying this for years. Before the president took office, they wanted to impeach him. Everything the president said is completely accurate. We stand by all that. Adam Schiff needs to tread very carefully on what he's saying in these ridiculous accusations without fact to back it up against the president of the United States. Because we know the two people on that call said nothing happened. And we know that. How nothing gonna, happened. How is this going to play out for 2020? I mean, all these people are up for re-election. Do you think mm -hmm. voters are going to vote them out, given what has taken place? 100 percent. I think they're concerned about that. I think um, many House members are very concerned about that. They are in very red districts. They are in districts that our president won by a landslide, and they need to be very careful, and they know that. And I think a lot of them, as you said, want to do the right thing. And on the other side, we have a united Republican Party because we know our president did nothing wrong and our party's standing together, House and Senate, and a lot of House Democrats. Are you sure about that? Do you worry that there are going to be some Republicans that go against the president if, in fact, it does go to trial in the Senate? No, I don't. I think Republicans, um, all of our Republican senators care about our country. Um, I know they do. And let, let's wait and see. Let's see. I think you're going to see a whole different side of this once the real evidence starts coming out in front of the Senate. I think it's going to be a whole different ball game, And I think it's going to be great for the president and good for the country and good for our Senate. Will Republicans be able to get the witnesses that they want to hear from in the Judiciary Committee hearings this week? Well, let's see. I don't want to get ahead of this, but, um, you know, right now today, as you know, we're only hearing from these con law experts, these professors pontificating on their analysis as to what constitutes impeachment. Well, who and decided who these academics are? Well, of course, we know that the, the, the Democrats chose three of them. We got one, three to one. How, how fair is that? Um, you know, we've been given very little notice. We just got the names of their experts. You know, this is a bait and switch. None of this would ever hold up in a court of law. And it's so absurd you know, what they've been doing to us, what they've been doing to our president while he is overseas at NATO, which is shameful, shameful what they're doing there. And today we're just going to hear more of the same, a bunch of 
analyst talking about this, which if this was clear cut, we wouldn't need to hear any of this. The, the president has actually been raising money in, in, in all of this. And sure the, the polls show that the interest in impeachment has gone down. Does that tell you anything about how this plays out over the next year as Americans are going to go to the polls to elect their next president in less than a year? Americans are smart people. They see through this. They see the waste of millions and millions of dollars that are ha that's happening when. <laughs>